and welcome back to Tech Day's 10 Minute IT Jams. I'm Tech Day's Managing Editor and today we're speaking with F-Secure's Director of Detection and Response, Matt Lawrence. F-Secure is a Europe-based cybersecurity firm with global reach. It protects more than 100,000 businesses worldwide. The company's research arm, F-Secure Lab, publishes reports and advisories about today's most pressing threats. We'll be talking about one of those reports today. Welcome, Matt. Thank you, delighted to be here. Okay, so let's get stuck into this. For people who are not familiar with F-Secure, what are your key products and offerings? Yeah, well, F-Secure has existed for over um, 30 years. Um, we are a, a cybersecurity company. Um, uh, some of your viewers may well be aware of, sort of F-Secure's fleet of uh, internet security products, um, and you know, through which we protect you know, hundreds of millions of consumers. Um, but we're also trusted by organizations around the world for which um, cybersecurity is absolutely critical. And, you know, predominantly that's through our um, consulting business units and our managed detection and response business units. And centrally, we exist to, to build trust in society and to keep people and businesses safe. Brilliant. So let's get into one of your most recent reports. Uh, we will publish a link to this in the story once it goes live, should you want to read about, read about this report. But uh, in a nutshell, this report links the uh, Advanced Precision Threat, or ATT group, called the Lazarus Group, to an attack on a company in the cryptocurrency sector. Now, can you outline your findings? What is this report about? Yeah, so, so this is what we call a, a tactical intelligence report, and this has come from directly from uh, an incident investigation that my incident response team in, investigated last year in, in 2019. Um, we have uh, as a company a, a global incident response capability and are responding to incidents around the world you know 24-7 and um, 365. This, this particular attack um, was against a organization within the cryptocurrency vertical and it was conducted by a group called the Lazarus Group. Um, Lazarus is a cybercrime group whose aims um, align with those of the government of the Democratic People's Republic of um, Korea. Um, the group has been targeting um, organizations within the cryptocurrency vertical since at least um, you know, 2017. Um, this, this particular attack, which happened in 2019, um, started pretty innocuously with a LinkedIn message to a IT systems administrator's LinkedIn account. Um, from there, the attackers were able to fish the sys sysadmin through a macro-enabled Word document. Um, these things um, are received you know, all the time by people and are a very common factor in, in phishing attacks. Um, in this particular case, the attackers utilized um, GDPR to trick the sysadmin to enable some functionality that was necessary for the um, particular phishing attack to work. But once they did that, the attackers moved slowly throughout the organization uh, and eventually met their objective of um, uh, stealing money, essentially. Um, now, what, what is particularly interesting and why we're releasing this report is this group is incredibly good at cleaning up after themselves. What I mean by that is if you imagine a, a car thief who, who arrives at a car, a, 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 crime scene with um, the means to clean up their fingerprints so that when the uh, police arrive afterwards to conduct their forensics investigation, they make the job you know, immeasurably harder because they've cleaned up evidence. This group does exactly the same, but, but in a digital sense. And they're very careful about what they do and how they do it and such that it means that when companies and, and capabilities like our instant response team come to investigate them, it can often be very difficult to understand exactly what they have done. In this particular case, through some pretty special um, forensics work and also through some fairly fundamental mistakes that the group made, we were able to uh, completely pull open this attack from start to end. And therefore, we felt it was essential for us to share this intelligence, which goes into some technical detail in the report because it's designed for technical people, threat intelligence people, security operations people to, to uh, consume it and apply it to protect their networks. But, it, you know, as well as cleaning up after themselves and as, um, you know, providing this resolution of 
what this group's doing once they're inside an organization. The phishing campaign connected to this, we found, has continued into this year. Uh, and in fact, we found links to suggest that they've targeted at least 14 countries with this campaign. Uh, and that continues. So really, this report is all about stopping this group from being as successful as they have been. Brilliant. Okay, so you mentioned that uh, Vladimir is possibly connected to uh, Korea. Now, there is a common belief that um, APT threat groups like this are either funded by or run by state-sponsored um, organisations, I guess you could call them. Now, what are some of the reasons that states would kind of back threat groups like this? Yeah, um, good question. There are various motives. Um, in this particular case, um, in the case of the Lazarus Group, um, a United Nations report um, published last year estimated that the North Korea hackers had stolen more than two billion US dollars um, for the regime in a series of um, cyber attacks. Um, and according to the UN, the money is being fueled into the regime's missile development programs. Um, aside from that, but this particular group is, is fairly famous and some of your viewers may remember them back from the 2014 um, Sony hack. Um, mm -hmm which was done for, you know, to make a political statement. So th there are various motives to why groups like this would be paid, but in this particular case, there is some fairly substantial ones. And, and also just to connect this to the um, cryptocurrency vertical, this particular group between 2017 and 18, it is reported that they're responsible for around about 65% of the total cryptocurrency stolen in that period. So they have fairly substantial operation um, and capabilities. Wow, wow. Okay, so readers who look at this report, what are some of the findings they, they should take away from this? What are the key lessons? In, in a general sense, um, it's important that viewers understand the risk that phishing presents um, in, in today's cyber threat landscape. Whether you're being targeted by nation state actors or otherwise, phishing still remains the prevalent means of, of access into organizations. The um, recent um, Verizon data breach report estimates that around about 80% of reported incidents start that way. It's really important that your viewers are vigilant when they're, they're um, you know, working with email um, you know, and, and understand that attackers will leverage fear in this particular case, the attackers talked about GDPR. But we've also seen many, many examples in recent months of attackers utilizing fear connected to COVID-19, for example, to trick users into clicking those links. And it's really important that users are vigilant and you know, maintain uh, access to latest advice around these types of threats. In this particular case, connected to this particular incident, what we're looking to do is to help targeted organizations to protect themselves better and ultimately raise the cost of operation for this group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so if uh, viewers want to maybe work with F-Secure to uh, bolster their, their phishing defense or maybe educate their, their people, um, how, do, how do they contact you? The best way is through our website, which you can find at www.f-secure.com. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much, Matt. This concludes our Tech Day 10-minute ITGM with F-Secure's Matt Lawrence. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Matt. Thank you very much.